So in this segment, we're going to be talking about books and their credibility. I am curious though, on that subject, I mean, how did you begin your research with your book? A lot of the old blokes weren't happy with the books that were out there. Right. I became curious. Then I started to listen to hearsay, listen to, and go, right, let's find out the truth. Let's put that little bit of extra work into it. And it was exciting. I thought this was going to be a great journey. Oh, look what I found. Look what I found. But after a while, I got copied a lot. And that is the reason for this section, unfortunately. Uh, we have that golden fake article, which was done by the People magazine back in, oh, I think it was 1983, beginning of 1983, they did that. And the golden fake title says it all. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, Donald Trump didn't invent the word fake news. I did. Right, eh? uh, and so he's talking about all the fake bits that I'd uncovered. Now, over time, I have watched newcomers become overnight experts, muddy the water and move on even write about people they never knew, like they were their best friends. I have been here since 1965. I drank constantly at the pub, worked on properties, shearing sheds and underground. Nothing will take those experiences away from me, or so I thought. This photograph is of my main teacher for underground work, Neville, and he's looking down at you, Job. Oh, cool. Some recognised authors had the briefest encounter with Hill End and extremely little or no ground, zero, down-to-earth experience, but wrote like experts. Others moved on here and literally, they only moved here to capitalise on the name of Hill End. And there I can use the words of Bill Marchant. 90, at 94 years of age, he's talking about how Effectively, they don't know anything because they don't move out of their house. You got some really good footage of him in your last documentary explaining that uh, most people just uh, walk into the town and think they know it all at well, first well, glance. Let's, let's listen to Bill so they know we're not making it up. There's not a lot of people that uh, from around Hill End that go out in the bush now. I had one bloke come in, you're going to love this one. Yeah. Um, he came here in 1973, had the camera. Click, 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 moved on. Yeah. Came back, oh, look, I'll guess around 2008, something like that. Said, Malcolm, and it was here, right here. He spread out all these photographs. He said, who are they? Yeah. Oh, that's Charlie Trapitic. That's it. Oh, it. Did you know that. Do you, um, can you tell me a bit about them? Yeah. He brings out a book and talks about them in the first person. <sighs> oh, this is me, old mate. He didn't even know who they were. He just snapped photographs in, but he's a world-renowned photographer and author. He photographed Nicole Kidman, um, John Howard. Not that that's in, to his credit, but yeah. he did. I mean, the camera might have had a meltdown. I understand. It's insulting. I mean, I can only imagine somebody I don't know talking about my mates from high school like they knew them when they did it. The problem is it's too easy to put history within the covers of a book. If it's within the covers of a book, oh, it's history. Oh, and if they've got a name, uh, must know better. I couldn't count the amount of times people have come in and bought my Hill End Gold book and said to me, I'm researching a book on gold. This is going to be wonderful research. The best one, the best one happened. Remember, I brought the Hill End Gold book out in 1982. And it wasn't that long ago, and it was an old fella too. He came in, well, old fella. He came in from Golgong and said, would you like to sell my book on gold? And I went, that's me, that's me. You're not Malcolm Drinkwater, are you? Oh, and I went, no. Yes. I thought you were dead. Like, that'd make it all right, oh, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, because it was 1982, he'd taken it for granted. I'd written the book in my 70s. The trouble is, when I wrote the book, Hill and Gold, my main source was people in their 70s. Yeah. So I suppose I wrote like them. When you write... A lot of people go to the computer and use trove. I always believe that hearsay, a rumour, was the best start. Mm -hmm. You go, right, it's a start. It's not fact. Mm -hmm. Don't write it as fact. And it but it gives you a lead to a follow. Person. Yeah, it came from a person in someone's mouth, obviously. And yeah. you track it down to the end. You might find a dead end. But I found, you see, living in Hill End, you've got to know the truth says. Mm -hmm. So you go, oh, I'm not listening to him. Mm -hmm. He's going to be full of it. But he's never told a lie in his life or had that reputation. And so if he says it, 
I'm going to follow that lead because you've got a personal association with Yeah, no, I get it. The experience follows the footwork type thing. A lot of authors just don't have that experience. Now, your mother, my wife, I've got to get that right. <laughs> <laughs> your mother, my wife, said to me, well, research, okay. See, a lot of people use newspapers. Well, when you consider Jack the Ripper's letters, they now believe were written by journalists to publish, making out it was Jack, so they could sell newspapers. They want it to go viral, don't they? And so you can look at a newspaper, oh, I'm afraid the clever one, as she is nicknamed, brought out this book, and it's just basically a cut and paste of newspaper stories. And I looked at it and go, no, no, what are you doing writing? No, you can't do that. Yeah, no. You haven't sourced it. In fact, I went to a copyright solicitor over a her, and his exact words were, she was slapdash. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's his words. But my wife then said to me, what is research? And I thought, okay, I'll look it up. And here it is. The systematic investigation into a study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. And that's the key to it. That's the key, yeah. New conclusions. So we're looking at Hill and Gold being recognised as the most up-to-date when it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tell you what, you would not believe the amount of people I know have copied it. Mm -hmm. I've had people come in here with recognised authors as their neighbours and said, oh, we saw your book on his kitchen table while he was writing. And I'm going, oh, great, thank you very much. The main issue here is that if these previous books I believed were correct, I would not have written. And that's why this was accepted so well, and I was able to build on it afterwards. It's, it started with curiosity, and then it became a passion. I've just got to find the answer to this, this, and this. When I first started, I'd have to go to Argyle Street at the Rocks, to the archives, white gloves, mm. pencil, yeah. flip through document after document, write it all down, make sure it was all right, and then come back. And quite often I'd be baited for information in the hotel, unfortunately. There was one well-known author that uh, uh, was written about in the newsletter, and they unknowingly, literally, uh, he must have literally fessed up, because what he'd do is he'd bait me for information. He didn't live here. Mm. It was a holiday place. Yeah. But he, when he got back, he knew I would have been researching thoroughly. Yeah. And he's a school teacher. He, he's got a a job during the week. Mm -hmm. I was doing this at my own expense. So this ground zero research at the archives and at other places proved different stories to the common books that were out there. A good example was I was the first to prove that the Royal Hotel at Hill End was built in 1872 as a boarding house, not as a hotel. It was only as the town shrunk and businesses relocated and businesses left that the boarding house disappeared. The old owner of the White Horse Hotel came in. There was a publican change because her husband had died. It went under her name. A name changed because the Royal Hotel at Tamborura ceased to exist. And she set up the Royal Hotel in 1876. There's a sign in front of the Royal Hotel. Brilliant. But it's a fake sign. It was done by Donald Friend. I mean, all these stories are in Hill End Gold. I'm just literally repeating bits and pieces uh, out of them. But this information was new conclusions. That's the key, new conclusions, where you've got beautiful here. This book, I loved it. Donald Friend's Hill Endiana. He's honest. He wrote part backed, part fiction. And so you can't go wrong with that unless you're quoting out of it as fact. Then you've got Harry Hodge or Mick Hodge. Well, I've, I did an article, a, a big segment in Hill End Gold on Rolly Hodge. Rolly was one of the last Teamsters. It would take him two and a half days to go to Bathurst and back and on a, with a wagon, sleeping under it over night time. There's so much to say about Rolly, it's not funny. His nickname was Gregor, but his brother was Harry Hodge, nicknamed Mick. I also worked with Ron Hodge, 
My best mate, who's passed away since, was Johnny, his son. A lot of association with the family, and they were critical of Mick. And so was Charles Marshall. Charles lived just up the road from Keast Burke. So when Keast Burke became associated with this, and that's all wrong, that's why the Halterman book, not all wrong, trust me. You can't get your information off a person who drinks heavily and likes a beer and likes a yarn and say it's backed. Yes. Keast went up the road mm. because Charles lived just up the road. Charles born in Hill End, a miner in Hill End. Uh, he's written stuff on Hill End. He, his story is in Hill End Gold. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and said to Keast, look, I went to school with Harry Hodge. Mm -hmm. I'll bring him down. I will have a look at these photographs you've found. Okay. And Harry went, I was born in Hill End. Yeah. As Rowley said, he left here at the age of 10 and went to boarding school, didn't come back until he retired. And now he's an expert. Yeah. Well, he's uh, Rowley, books. He must be. <laughs> Rowley was very, well, he was a history master. Look, this is th without fear of contradiction. The general consensus from the elder Hill End people who were familiar with both him and his work. Book one started it. Mistakes. Right. Got the ball rolling. Some good records. Mm -hmm. Some good information. Book two. Got a bit carried away. Okay. Ego. Right. Book three. I can't say because it would be too derogatory. Right. But everyone says should never have gone to print. And this is the one they refer to as the Bible on Hill End. That's a bit of a worry. Hence, Hill End Gold. Yeah. Now, when I did Hill End Gold, we had people giving like references. Um, you can read out, we had a senior ranger for the area. Yes, uh, he said, the book will fill a long-standing need for a comprehensive work on Hill End, Tamborura Goldfields, mining practices. The study, insofar as we know, is the first to cover this field, and we are sure all are interested in its history. That was great while Ted was there. Yeah. When Ted left, a new lady came on. I uh, love her quote. She said to me, Malcolm, thank you. You've done our interpretation work for us. Second quote, our legal advisors were you were concerned copyright does not exist. And they were right. I'd love to catch up to was his name. Right. Charles did an audio visual for the National Parks Visitor Centre Museum. Yeah. First photograph comes up, this one. See, this is the original. And this that... is new conclusions. This is new research. The man sitting down at the front happens to be a gold spink, which was Gracie Kim's father. Gracie said, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't let the National Parks get that photo. It's the first photograph that comes up on the audio visual. And then he does a read out of my book, and guess who gets credit for all of it? He does. Produced and written by And he's used your photo that was specifically given to you, which you didn't give permission for, and he's quoted out of your book. Well, I had another bloke come through it, and it was, it was because of the Granville train crash, and I don't know whether you know about that, yeah. but it was a pretty severe accident in Sydney, and there was a heap of dead bodies in yeah. train carriages and all the rest of it, and the bloke suffered a breakdown. And uh, he ended up retiring from the National Parks. But he worked in head office at the Graphic Arts Department. Yeah. And part of his therapy was to go around and apologise to people for wrongdoings. Okay. And he came in here and said, I've got a confession, Malcolm. Oh, no. The quality of the photographs in this book was so good. He said, we pulled the whole book apart in Sydney and we photographed the whole lot of it. That's, that's literally butchering your he, work now. He said, that's where the signs came from. He said, I'm so sorry. And I thought, well, okay, fine. At least it was... And you got one apology there. One, <laughs> it, and it was an important admission because I'd often wondered how they'd got the and information. And these are the signs that are around the, the plaques in Hill End, are they? Oh, uh, yes, unfortunately. Let's get back to the Hill End Gold book. Okay. We've covered the ones before. Trust me, a lot of stuff after is a copy. Mm -hmm. When it was released in 1982, the New South Wales Libraries Department made a bulk purchase of 50 of those books to go to every major library in New South Wales. The smaller ones, they came in and purchased their own. I remember in the... high school, there was one at my school and there was one in Bathurst uh, City Library. And we'll cover it later too, because every time I published, I've given a copy to the Hill End School. And now when they brought out their new book, I don't exist. Oh. Harry does. I don't exist.
And I know because the information's not in his books and they've copied the correct stuff, but no, I don't exist, unfortunately. And that brings me to a, uh, another subject. When you do a book, uh, there's a forward done. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that the people that did the forwards would actually, the testimonials, have read the book. They'd have to be important well, references, yeah. You would not believe the people that l lately I've questioned. I've said to like, Chris, did you read that book before you did the forward? And he went, no. Nope. So do you realise it's all wrong? His face drops. Well, you should have read it or cross-referenced, shouldn't you? I made sure everyone did. You can read out just a couple there, one from Charles and one from uh, Professor Alan Jopling, who uh, did his master's qualifying thesis for getting his professorship over three years on the Hill End Goldfield. And I worked under him as an underling. Really? So, hey... I had an outside education. Well, Alan Jopling says your efforts will help to put Hillend on the map again. And uh, Charles Marshall, who said you knew very well, said this is a well-researched book, uh, which will be of great interest not only to the student, the tourist and the fossickers, but also to all those interested in Australian gold mining and history. Now, what better more reference can you get than a mining engineer and, uh, as you say, a professor just about? He got the Officer of Australia medal for discovering New Guinea gold fields. Charles did. Oh, oh look, I could, he, he was a good bloke, good mm. friend of mine. Some of the stories, I said to him, what was it like over there? He said, Malcolm, he said, I slept with a loaded revolver under my pillow. He said, and a bucket of gold under my bed. He said, and occasionally the headhunters would come in and pick a few off, but oh. we'd have to guard them. And I said, how did you feel? And he said, Terrifying. <laughs> like, well, and he went just, he just, he went like that. I get goosebumps <laughs> imagining the story. He worked in the reward mine. Well, his story is in Hillen. Oh, no, it's not in Hillen Gold. Yes, it is. It's been copied. It's in a newsletter. And well, of although course it Charles is. did the work for that with me personally, the newsletter has got him with a great grand niece or some distant relative supplying information. I don't information. mind them advertising, but you've got to give credit where credit's due, hey? That's it. Well, anyway, that's about finished off a bit of gossip. In other words, I don't mind a little bit of this and I don't mind a little bit of that, but when it comes to this, stuff that. Yep. No worries.